Okay, so that was the basic drum or percussion synth uh, generator. Uh, so what can you do having done all of that? Well, I propose a few things in the exercises. Um, one of which is that you might want to make several of these. Um, but if you do that and have them all in the same patch, they're going to start getting a bit messy. Um, so this is a good opportunity to introduce something which is quite useful, and that is the encapsulate function in Max. And that allows you to take a bunch of content and stuff it all into a single object of your own. Um, which you can open up and edit, but it uh, it clears a lot of screen space. So we'll just we'll do that. It's very easy. Uh, we'll unlock the patch. We'll choose the bits that we want to encapsulate. Um, and I think for now, I'm going to choose everything but the button object. Um, or everything apart from the button object and the receive out and so on because we might well you'll see in a minute um, so I go to the edit menu and I click on encapsulate and uh, hey presto we have everything has been reduced down to this uh, object with a P on it um, and this is a patcher object and we can go into that patching object so if I lock the patch and double click on it then that's opened up, so it opened up in another on another screen. Um, but there is our original patch um, with this object at the top here, which is an inlet, and that represents the inlet that you can see at the top of the object here. Um, and if I wanted to, I could uh, make a new inlet, and you'll notice that they're numbered. So the first inlet is number one, second inlet is number two, and if I move this out of the way, you can see that the second inlet has appeared there. If I remove this second inlet object then the inlet disappears and I can name this patcher object to make it clear to me um, what it's actually got in it so if I unlock the patch again I can uh, put a space after the P and put in the name of this so I'll call it snare-ish and when I do that then it reduces in size to accommodate the, the word um, and there you have it you've got a um, an object which has an encapsulated function and then I could simply uh, press alt and drag to make another one uh, maybe call this a um, I don't know a symbol oops, symbol ish double click on there <clears throat> and I can modify my original sound oh yeah I've forgotten what I ch already changed it so this certainly wouldn't sound like a snare um, Again, I can click on clear to, to, to clear. Well, it's only clear, cleared that first one, so maybe we'll clear all of them. Uh, and so what would a sort of symbol sound or a uh, sound like? Well, again, just as with the snare, it would have quite a rapid attack with a rapid de decay, but it would have a maybe a longer ring to it. So what I think I'll do is I'll make it 300 milliseconds long and give it a long tail. So in relatively speaking, it's got a very short attack and a long tail going to nothing over the course of three seconds. That's still quite short. Um, <clears throat> in that case, we would have a uh, maybe a higher but nevertheless static frequency so it wouldn't go up or down um, but this time maybe we wouldn't have quite such a noisy attack so I will start not at zero for, for my y-axis but I will still make it go increasingly pitched as it goes on so if I click on this one Ooh, it's still too noisy, far too noisy at the beginning. So we'll make it much more pitched at the opening. See whether that makes a difference. Yeah, it's a bit more symbolish. But I think we could probably make it quite a lot higher pitched. Hmm. 
Well, not so symbolish. But anyway, it's it's certainly of a different character to the snare sound that we had. So you can uh, make as many of those as you want to. Um, and of course, if you were if you had your launch key to hand, then you could get the drum pads on the launch key to trigger your sounds. Um, now I don't have a launch key to hand, but I do remember that. Uh, we need a note in object in order to receive the relevant data um, and if you remember it's coming in on channel 10 and I only want attack information I only want the note ons I don't need any note offs so I can make a strip note to get rid of note off information and then I will choose which pads I want to receive data from. So I go to select and I choose pad 40 and 41 and 42 and if I remember rightly those are along the top row. So what will happen is when you hit a pad you get the note number or the, or the, the pad number um, which comes through strip note and gets rid of any velocity information that is, is a zero. Goes into select which recognises the numbers 40, 41 and 42. So the first pad would trigger that snare sound uh, and the second pad would trigger that cymbal-ish sound. So that's one way of, of triggering those sounds. And because I don't have a launch key, I can't test it, um, but I'm pretty sure I've got that right. Um, another way of doing it is to use a uh, your keyboard. Um, now I do have a tutorial in YouTube which is which I'll provide a name and a link for on Blackboard. But I'll just show you very quickly what you can do. And that is to, if you press a uh, key, <clears throat> um, this recognizes keystrokes on your keyboard. Um, and each key is allocated what's called an ASCII number. Uh, so if I lock the patch and hit the letter Q, lowercase, then it gives me the number 113. If I hit W, it gives me 119. If I hit E, then I get 101. Now I, I need to remember those ASCII numbers. And if I do that, I need only select that number. So the first one I've forgotten already, stupid, um, is 113. 113. I should really know this because I've done it so many times. The next one, which was W, is 119. And the third one, which is E, is 101. So if I simply connect key to the select object, and I can then connect, when it recognizes 113, it will hit the snare-ish sound. When it recognizes 119, it will hit the other one, or trigger it. Uh, and it's as simple as that. So now your keyboard will control your drum hits. That was Q, that was me hitting Q, that one was me hitting W. How handy is that? And another thing you can do of course is to integrate this with a sequencer. So here's one that we made in the first week. I've just copied and pasted that one in. <clears throat> and Let's get rid of this so we can actually see the thing. So this is one track of a step sequencer. And of course, you could add more. Um, but we no longer need the external MIDI synth on the computer. So instead, we could uh, connect the outputs of this uh, very simple 8-bit step sequencer to one of these percussion sounds. Um, so I'll do that. I'll make a, I'm going to, uh, instead of, this is a neat trick, instead of going to this make uh, this message box, I'm going to send everything into a single button object. And if I select all of the lines that I want to copy across and choose one of the little red nodules that connect it to the message box, 
I can move all of them over to this button object. That should save you a little bit of time if you're doing things like that. Uh, I can get rid of this um, note out object and then connect the output of that button object to this button object. Of course I've got far more button objects here than I actually need but this is uh, just to um, reduce screen, screen clutter rather than connecting all of these to that over there which would make it look a mess. Um, so we've got uh, a drum sequence of for our snare-ish sound um, and of course I could do exactly the same thing for the cymbal-ish sound. So for that I'm going to copy all of this and connect that select object to the counter and connect that button object to the symbol button object. So now we've got metro and counter uh, controlling the count for both of these sequencing what we might call tracks and both of those in turn are connected to our two instruments up here. And once again, you can duplicate as much as you want in order to make something a little more sophisticated. And that should work. It's a very, very slow... Oops. that. So there you go. Um, with a little bit of fiddling and a little bit of finessing you could come up with something potentially quite usable with that.